So how does an airplane fly? Newton's laws of motion can be used to understand how an airplane can stay in the air and move in different directions. Simply put, a force called lift is created by way of design so that a heavy object such as an aircraft may stay up in the air. Another force called thrust is created to propel the aircraft forward. The airplane can be moved or rotated about its axis using control surfaces to steer it the way we want it to go, up or down, left or right. We shall explain the theory, axis and forces of flight in this module along with the basics of angle of attack and stall. The airplane can be moved about three axes using control surfaces, the lateral axis, the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. Movement about the lateral axis is called pitch or nose up and down of the aircraft. This is what pitch movement looks like. Movement about the horizontal axis is called roll movement. And this is what roll movement looks like. Movement about vertical axis is called yaw movement. And here we have a depiction of yaw movement for the aircraft. Let us talk about control surfaces for the airplane. The primary control surfaces are the aileron, elevator and rudder. The pilot can control aileron and elevator using the control column or joystick in the cockpit and rudder pedals for the rudder. Aileron is for roll control and is situated on the wings of the airplane. Elevator is for pitch control and situated on the horizontal stabilizer of the airplane. The rudder controls yaw and is situated on the vertical stabilizer of the airplane. There are also secondary control surfaces such as flaps and slats, spoilers and speed brakes and trimming devices. Secondary flight controls are not necessarily present on all aircraft. A combination of movement of the control surfaces is used to change the attitude and direction of the airplane's movement. Lift, thrust, weight and drag are four forces that aerodynamically affect the flight at the center of gravity or C of G of the airplane. We create lift to counteract weight, thrust to counteract drag. Lift is the force created by the effect of airflow as it passes over and under the wings. Weight is the force created by the downward pull of gravity. Thrust is the force that propels the aircraft forward and drag is a backward retarding force which limits the speed of the aircraft. The direction in which each force affects flight is shown by the direction of arrows in this graphic here. The airplane is said to be at equilibrium level flight at constant speed when lift equals weight and thrust equals drag. Thrust is created when a small mass of air is propelled backwards at a high velocity, counteracting drag. Newton's laws as applied to flight. The first law states that an every object persists in its state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless compelled to change by forces impressed upon it. So if there is no net force resulting from unbalanced forces acting on an object, that is if all the external forces cancel each other out, the object will maintain a constant velocity. If the velocity is zero, the object remains at rest and if an additional external force is applied, the velocity will change then because of said force. At constant altitude, if thrust equals drag, there is no resultant force. The aircraft holds constant airspeed and no acceleration or deceleration is experienced by the aircraft.
If thrust is greater than drag, then we do have a resultant force which affects the velocity and the airplane accelerates. Thrust is greater than drag during takeoff or when air speed is increased during flight. The second law of motion states the force equals mass times acceleration. That is, the force needed to accelerate the airplane is equal to the mass of the airplane multiplied by the desired acceleration. The third law of motion states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Both lift and thrust can be explained by the third law. Considering generation of lift by the wing of the airplane, the air moving past the wing is deflected downward by the shape and motion of the wing. The wing exerts a force or action on the air and in reaction, it is pushed upward by the air which is lift. As for thrust, when the engine pushes mass of air towards the rear of the aircraft, the equal and opposite reaction is what propels the aircraft forward which is what we call thrust. So lift is generated to counteract weight, thrust is generated to counteract drag and these four forces are managed by the pilot so the aircraft is free from gravity and control can be maintained over flight. Airfoil and lift We know lift is generated using the airplane's wings. The cross-sectional shape of the wing is what is called airfoil. Consider Newton's laws. Airfoil is introduced into smooth, streamlined airflow, disturbing uniform motion. As can be seen in this picture here, the peculiar shape of the airfoil splits the airflow, such that the air above the airfoil has higher velocity, creating a low pressure above, and air below the airfoil has lower velocity, creating a relatively high pressure below the airfoil and this pressure difference creates lift. Shape of the airfoil also affects lift. The pilot can essentially change the shape of airfoil in flight by deploying flaps on the wings. As can be seen in this graphic here, deploying the flap is changing the shape of the airfoil, increasing the wings area, thereby increasing lift efficiency. Angle of attack and stall Let us look at the airfoil once again. The curvature of the airfoil is called camber. The leading edge is the part of the airfoil that meets the airflow first. The trailing edge is the portion of the airfoil where the airflow over the upper surface rejoins the lower surface airflow. The camber line is a line drawn between the leading edge and the trailing edge. A straight line that measures the distance between the leading edge and the trailing edge is called the cord of the wing. The wing is attached to the airframe with the cord line inclined at a slight angle which is called angle of incidence. The angle at which the airfoil hits relative wind is called angle of attack. It is denoted by alpha and can be seen as the angle between the extended cord line and the relative wind in the picture here. While increasing the angle of attack increases lift and airspeed, beyond a particular value of alpha, no lift is generated and the airplane enters what is called stall. Stall is caused by separation of airflow from the wing's upper surface. For a given airplane, Stall always occurs at the same angle of attack regardless of the airspeed, flight attitude or weight of the airplane. The angle of attack at which stall occurs is called critical angle of attack or stalling angle of attack and as said previously it is constant for an airfoil by design. Let us now talk about stall management and recovery. Most airplanes have stall warning systems in place. This usually consists of a device which measures angle of attack and corresponding warning system in the cockpit. A small vane extending forward of the leading edge of the wing measures angle of attack called AOA vane. 
the warning inside the cockpit may be in the form of a red light or oral warning, a buzzer, a bell or an announcement when angle of attack exceeds critical alpha. Because insufficient lift is created at this point, the aircraft begins to stall, that is, lose altitude. To recover from stall, the pilot can do one of two things. Lower the nose of the airplane to decrease the angle of attack or apply more power to accelerate the airplane. If it is at full power already, then pitch down is the only option to recover the aircraft from stall. We now know that the airplane can be moved about lateral, horizontal and vertical axes, which is roll, pitch and yaw movement respectively, using control surfaces. By managing the four forces of flight, lift, weight, thrust and drag, we overcome gravity and control the movement of the airplane. Aerodynamically, the shape of the airfoil or wing affects movement of air about the wing and therefore, airspeed and lift. Lift can be managed by varying angle of attack or changing the shape of the airfoil that is deployment retraction of flaps or accelerating the aircraft. If the airplane enters stall, pilot can reduce the angle of attack by reducing pitch or creating more lift by applying more power to accelerate the airplane. This series aims to introduce those interested in aviation to the basics, for newcomers to the field, for plane spotters and fellow aviation enthusiasts, as well as a refresher for aviation professionals. We shall follow up with modules on classification of the aircraft, that is ATA chapters, and a targeted aircraft systems exposition based on those ATA chapters. Thanks for sticking with us this far. All questions and comments are welcome, and we shall answer those to the best of our knowledge.